Hello, second grade sleuths, and welcome to another secret mission. Today's mission is mission number two. We're going to get started by working on some phonics. Today's phonics lesson includes how to tell if a word has long vowel sounds. Yesterday we talked about short vowel sounds. Long vowel sounds are different. The alphabet is made up of vowels and consonants. The vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. Vowels have two sounds. One sound is the short sound and one is the long sound. The long sound says its name. A lot of times when a vowel has a long sound, it's because it has a silent E. Silent E is like a ninja. It can be seen, but it is so incredibly quiet that it doesn't make a sound when you're saying a word. So let's take a look at some silent E words. Lake, dime, and flute. None of them say the silent E. Another way that a vowel says its long name is if it's in a vowel pair. This is the rule. When two vowels go a walkin', the first one does the talking. This means that whatever the first vowel in the vowel pair is, it's the one that gets to say its name. For example, when you say AI together, you say the long A sound because A comes first. Let's take a look at some vowel pair words and decide what the sound is going to be. Paint. The A comes first because when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. Tray. Eagle. Beats. That one's a little different because they're both E's. Goat. Pie. Blue. All right, let's play a game. Decide if the word has a silent E or a vowel pair. Boat. Vowel pair. Nine. Silent E. Clay. Vowel pair. Sheet. Vowel pair. Like. Silent E. Glue. Vowel pair. All right, your turn, sleuths. Complete the phonics worksheet for this mission. Press pause now. All right, let's do some more grammar. Let's talk today about simple sentences. As we know, sentences have two parts, a subject and a predicate. There are three types of sentences that you can write, simple, compound, and complex. Each one has different rules. We'll get into that in a bit. Today, we're going to actually just talk about two of those types. We're gonna talk about simple and compound sentences, then you're going to practice identifying simple sentences and writing them in your worksheet. So, simple sentences have one subject and one predicate. They are usually short. I have changed the color of the simple sentence in this paragraph to show you what I mean. So let's talk about compound sentences. Compound sentences, not complex sentences as it says up top, use the words and, but, for, nor, or, so, and yet to join two simple sentences. Here is an example. I want to go to the zoo, but I can't because it's closed. So let's play a game. I want you to decide if the sentence is simple or compound. Remember to look for the words and, but, for, nor, or, so, and yet for compound sentences. The dog ran. Hmm, what do you think? Simple or compound? Yep, it's simple. We went to the store and then the park. 
Do you see any of those keywords that we talked about? Hmm. It's a compound sentence. I cleaned my room so I could go play outside. Ooh, I saw a key word in there, did you? The key word is so. That makes this a compound sentence. My dad took us out to dinner. I don't see any key words in there. Hmm. That must mean this is a simple sentence. I want to read or watch a video after school. Oh, I think I heard one of those words that we were looking for. Yeah, I see or. This is a compound sentence. Her dress is blue. That's pretty short. I don't see any of those special words. This is a simple sentence for sure. All right, your turn sleuths. Complete the grammar worksheet for this mission. Make sure that you turn it in if you're using Google Classroom. Press pause now. We're halfway done sleuths, time for reading comprehension. Today we're gonna to talk about what it means to compare and contrast. So one way to help you show that you comprehend or get what a text is saying is to compare and contrast things within the text. Sometimes it's characters or settings, just different things. So when you compare, you tell how two things are the same. Compare means the same. When you contrast, you tell how two things are different. Contrast means different. Mirror or repeat after me. Compare means the same. Contrast means different. Good job. A Venn diagram is one type of a graphic organizer that we can use to compare and contrast. The things that are different go on the outside. The things that are the same go in the middle. So let's practice. See if you can compare and contrast the following groups of two things. Remember, compare means the same. Contrast means different. You might want to pause between each one. Compare apples with oranges. Press pause now. Compare and contrast a Tyrannosaurus Rex with a Triceratops. Press pause now. Finally, compare and contrast Easter and Halloween. Press pause now. All right, it's your turn. Listen to the story and then complete the comprehension worksheet for this mission. My suggestion is that you compare and contrast the two main characters, or the two teachers, in the story. Miss Nelson is Missing by Harry Allard and James Marshall. The kids in room 207 were misbehaving again. Spitballs stuck to the ceiling. Paper planes whizzed through the air. They were the worst behaved class in the entire school. Now settle down, said Miss Nelson in a sweet voice. But the class would not settle down. They whispered and giggled. They squirmed and made faces. They were even rude during story hour and they always refused to do their lessons. Something will have to be done, said Miss Nelson. The next morning, Miss Nelson did not come to school. Wow, yelled the kids. Now we can really act up. They began to make more spitballs and paper planes. Today, let's just be terrible, they said. Not so fast, hissed an unpleasant voice. A woman in an ugly black dress stood before them. I am your new teacher, Miss Viola Swamp. And she rapped the desk with her ruler. Where's Miss Nelson? asked the kids. Never mind that, snapped Miss Swamp. Open those arithmetic books. Miss Nelson's kids did as they were told. They could see that Miss Swamp was a real witch. She meant business. 
Right away, she put them to work. And she loaded them down with homework. We'll have no story hour today, said Miss Swamp. Keep your mouth shut, said Miss Swamp. Sit perfectly still, said Miss Swamp. And if you misbehave, you'll be sorry, said Miss Swamp. Days went by and there was no sign of Miss Nelson. The kids missed Miss Nelson. Maybe we should try to find her, they said. Some of them went to the police. Detective McSmog was assigned to the case. He listened to their story. He scratched his chin. Hmm, he said. Hmm. I think Miss Nelson is missing. Detective McSmog would not be much help. Other kids went to Miss Nelson's house. The shades were tightly drawn and no one answered the door. In fact, the only person they did see was the wicked Miss Viola Swamp coming up the street. If she sees us, she'll give us more homework. They got away just in time. Maybe something terrible happened to Miss Nelson. <gasps> Maybe she was gobbled up by a shark, said one of the kids. But that didn't seem likely. Maybe Miss Nelson went to Mars, said another kid. But that didn't seem likely either. I know, exclaimed one know-it-all. Maybe Miss Nelson's car was carried off by a swarm of angry butterflies. But that was the least likely of all. The kids in room 207 became very discouraged. It seemed that Miss Nelson was never coming back, and they would be stuck with Miss Viola Swamp forever. They heard footsteps in the hall. Here comes the witch, they whispered. Hello, children, someone said in a sweet voice. It was Miss Nelson. Did you miss me, she asked. We certainly did, cried all the kids. Where were you? Oh, that's my little secret, said Miss Nelson. How about a story hour? Oh, yes, cried the kids. Miss Nelson noticed that during story hour, no one was rude or silly. What brought about this lovely change, she asked. That's our little secret, said the kids. Back at home, Miss Nelson took off her coat and hung it in the closet, right next to an ugly black dress. When it was time for bed, she sang a little song. I'll never tell, she said to herself with a smile. P.S. Detective McSmog is working on a new case. He is now looking for Miss Viola Swamp. The end. All right, Sluice, last up is math. Here we go. Today we're going to talk about comparing three digit numbers in all number forms. An important skill to have is knowing how to compare numbers. In math, we use the symbols below to help us compare numbers. So what do these symbols mean? Well, each of these symbols has a different meaning. The first one means less than, the second greater than, the third equal to, and the last not equal to. When you compare numbers, you have to start by looking at the largest place value in the numbers. So below we have 400 and 409. The four is in the hundreds. So if that number is the same, then you go to the next largest place value, which is the tens. Both of those have the same as well. So that means you go to the next largest place value, which is the ones. We have a zero and a nine. Obviously, we know that the nine is larger. So now it's, just, it's time for us to decide what symbol are we gonna put in there? 400 is less than 409. We make the alligator eat the largest number, as you've been taught. So again, this number sentence is 400 is less than 409. We knew that because we compared the hundreds, then the tens, and then the ones. When we compare numbers, we can use these symbols for any number form. Sometimes you have to decide what both numbers are before adding a symbol. For example, we have 300 plus 10 plus 7 is what to 371? That's different. We have to go and find the answer to the first part, 
we have to know what 300 plus 10 plus 7 is before we can compare it to 371. So 300 plus 10 plus 7 is 317. Now that we have the 317, we can use our rules to compare 317 and 371. We know that 3 is the same, but the 1 and the 7 are different, so that means that 317 is less than 371, or 317 is not equal to 371. So let's practice. You decide which symbol would be best for each number comparison sentence. If you want to write them down, you can pause in between each one. 410 is what to 500? 410 is less than 500. 373 is what to 372? That's right, it's greater than. 400 plus 20 plus 9 is what to 429? Make sure to figure that first part out first. They're equal. 53 tens, 9 ones is what to 529? Well, that's 539 is greater than 529. So now it's your turn. Complete the math worksheet for this mission. Good luck, sleuths. Congratulations, you have accomplished the second mission. You are super sleuths. I'll see you again soon for mission three. Mrs. Kitchen, out.